But anyway, Joanna, thank you so much for coming and joining us this evening. I'm really excited to chat with you. Uh, Joanna Davidson Politiano, thank you again for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love talking about books. Cool. Well, that is exactly what we're going to do. But first, we're going to introduce you. Do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got started writing in historical romances? Sure. Um, I actually I started out working for a pharmaceutical company um, after college, <clears throat> and I wrote um, their, some of their clinical trials and things like that. Intensely boring. Um, interesting to a degree, but just not for me. Um, so I started writing a family history novel uh, based on my great grandparents during that time in my life and I fell in love with writing novels and I didn't really get back to it until I married my husband and we started having babies and I quit my job. My first baby took four hour naps and I didn't know what to do with myself so I started <laughs> picking back up novel writing again and I just had so much fun. So had you been a big reader in that time period too, or did you uh, kind of come and go as? Oh, yes. I, I have been a big reader since I could put words together, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are some of the books that you love to read that kind of got you uh, interested in historical? Um, I really like Daphne du Maurier. I don't know if any of you readers are familiar with her work. She always catches me by surprise, and I love that. Um, I've loved Laura Ingalls Wilder when I was really little and Roald Dahl and uh, I don't know I think the historical market has been picking up and in the last couple decades it's just done some astounding work and I, mm -hmm. I love it so much. <laughs> Well, and it's fun because I, I, I want to of course talk about how you do your research but jumping back to your, your earlier comment about writing your grandparents love story how how did you feel about doing that? What was the what was the pull um, and the intrigue in telling that story? Well, it actually came about because an aunt showed up in our lives that I had never met before. She was eighty seven at the time, and nobody had ever told us that she had existed because there was this sort of um, undisclosed part of our family history, and it opened up this whole thing where my great, great grandfather actually had two different wives at the same time. Oh, and he wow. had two separate families, uh, one in Norway and one in America. And um, so it just floored me. And what happened to this family and the kids was so um, interesting to me from um, playing the piano in the silent movie theaters, um, putting themselves through high school and things like that. It just fascinated me. So I wrote that story and how he fell in love with his wife and all of that. I have never met my great grandparents, but um, I've just always been fascinated by their story. Mm -hmm. And um, that story just got me kind of addicted to the art of storytelling. Yeah. So what did you do? Um, Cause you said you kind of had like a, a, your words, boring path to writing <laughs> and that was your relief there. But um, how did you sort of evolve your voice and figure out that that was that this was sort of, these were these, giving these people these other opportunities. I feel like that's very common in your book is that you're, you're giving these characters either inspired by real characters or not this extra voice. Um, and there's something important and something special about that. Uh, you mean their voice, the way they speak or? No, just like just being um, able to say what they need to say. Say what they need yeah. to say, yeah. Um, well, let's see. I'm not even sure how to answer that. Um, a lot of a lot of my inspiration for my characters and their voices just come from the fact that there's so many people are overlooked and have so much, um, but there's not many people that they feel are listening. Yeah. And there's just so much value in people that are that this value just gets overlooked so much. And I try to bring that out in my characters. And I try, I really want readers to see uh, that there's so many layers to people and they all have stories behind them. Yeah. And that's, so, so I don't know if that answers what you were asking. <laughs> oh, no, it for sure does. And I think it's interesting because I have a question a little bit later about the love note and how 
you have the story kind of, or the, the letter gets interpreted by different people throughout the story. Um, but first, uh, how did you do your research um, and what inspired the love note? Oh, Joanna, did we lose you? Oh, there we go. Okay, good. All right. Sorry, I think, yep. Okay. So I was just, I was just asking Joanna, um, what inspired the love note? Well, the love note was actually a last minute put together idea. Um, my publisher asked for three story ideas for my next contract. And I, I gave them to him. I had thought these out for the, like several years while I'd written my other ones. And they rejected one of my ideas and asked me to come up with another one. And they're like, oh, just shoot us something by sometime tomorrow. And my ideas percolate for so long. I had no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. So um, a friend of mine had written a, a lost love letter story with the dead, the dead letter office. And I love that idea, I was fascinated by it. And my grandparents had actually, most of their relationship had taken place through letters because they were World War II couple. Okay. And they had only met a handful of times in person. And um, so they just wrote love letters back and forth to each other. And um, it, was, it was an amazing, like their romance is my favorite of anybody I know in real life. So oh. I was so fascinated by that. And the idea of a lost letter that gets back to the right person um, and just all that, it, that fascinated me so much. Um, so I started out on that and then a friend of mine pointed me towards Signed, Sealed and Delivered, the Hallmark show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started getting a lot more inspiration for just reconnecting people with letters that have been lost. And I had a lot of fun writing that. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's such a, um, it's such a great way to show emotion because there's so much passion and love in a love letter. You know, it's in the name. And so yes. everybody that finds some, anybody that would find something that would want that message, if it was possible to get back to who it needed to get to. Yes. And the cool thing about the written word is um, I can think about what I, what I'm saying when I write it out and I can change it to mean, to say exactly what I'm trying to say. And speaking doesn't always come across that way. Sometimes you say things and you don't think about initially how it's going to come across to somebody, especially in uh, a romantic relationship. So letter writing, it just allows you to pour, pour your thoughts out and get them accurate and, you know, not even do it in front of them. So that was mm -hmm. fun. Um, how did you research the, uh, the town, the beach town that you set the story in? Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to visit a lot of the UK mm -hmm. and visit different parts of my life. And so this was a town, it was kind of based on the White Cliffs of Dover. Um, it was a little bit south of there and it's a place that I visited and there's such a distinct feel to the air. It's, it's just so moist and so uh, alive and beautiful and setting a story there. Um, I just, I knew I, I, there had to be something set there because it was so beautiful. Um, and beyond that, I actually, I read a lot of books about the Brighton area and things like that. And some books that took place there during the Victorian era. Um, for a little bit of background, but my favorite thing I did was to talk to the people who currently live there. They have the most amazing, because a lot of them have lived there for many generations, uh, their families. So How did you get to, in touch with them? Uh, well, I would go to the pubs in the area mm -hmm. and I would take walks and there were always people hanging out with the dogs on the beach and things like that. And I would just talk to them and they love talking about their home because there's a lot of locals around there and they only see the locals and they all know the stories. So it's a lot of fun because it's not a touristy place where I was staying. Um, it was so much fun for them and they had so many great stories. Just everything from legends to their own family stories and a lot of those details peppered into the story themselves, so. Yeah, that's so cool. That's like the, um, having that opportunity to hear from different local people and just really get all those stories has to just be such like amazing fuel for a storyteller because you're just like oh there's all these stories that I can <laughs> tell now from from just like one night conversation with eight people absolutely and it makes it much more three-dimensional to me when I'm writing about it and so much more colorful too mm -hmm. so um like I, with Willa finding the note and making it her, oh, sorry, go ahead. Excuse me. I know this cold weather is getting us. Where are you located? Where are you calling us from? 
I am from, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'm from I'm Indiana. Indiana. <laughs> sorry. No, no, you're fine. Do you need a, just a moment? You can take a moment if you need one. I should be okay. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I know this cold weather is like drying everybody out. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> so um, with, with Willa finding the, the love note and then everybody kind of getting involved with helping her figure out where it needed to go, I really loved the um, how you played with interpretation and how everybody that touched the letter pulled something different from it. Um, and without, of course, without giving any spoilers away, I, I just kind of want you to talk a little bit about how you play with interpretation. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm how sorry. you play with interpretation in the book um, and why, uh, you know, just kind of how you play with it and why that's, that was so much fun for you to give your characters all these different ways of read, reading the letter that Willa didn't necessarily see. Sure. So I think we read into things what we want to hear. And there was a lot of longing, a lot of people in the household. <coughs> it was just a lot very open-ended. It wasn't signed and it wasn't addressed to anybody. And um, they referenced knowing a secret about the recipient. And everybody has some secret that if they say, you know, I know your secret, everybody's like, oh. And so it was a way for them to all be like, that's about me. It's specific enough that they're talking about me, mm -hmm. but it fit everybody. And it opened up, <coughs> it opened up a desire that was very universal for the whole household. Yeah. Um, so how do you balance the mystery with the love story? Honestly, I started writing mysteries. I have never been a romance writer, mm -hmm. but all of my friends um, that read my original book were like, oh, the, the man in your book is so cool. You have to draw that out. You have more scenes of them together. And so the romance started creeping into my books and um, quite honestly, just became a thread in all my books and I can't, I can't get away with it now, I guess, but- um, Can't get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's actually become a fun element and I have not read a lot of romances so I'm not really an expert on writing them, um, but I watch people around me and I look at the dynamics between married couples and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of that kind of is fodder for my, my stories. Yeah, cool. All right, well, uh, Joanna, now we're gonna get into our rapid fire portion of uh, the interview before we dip into our after hours Q and A. So- um, Awesome. These are just uh, just some whatever comes to the top of your head, however you want to answer them. Okay, what is your favorite trope to read? Ooh, marriage of convenience. Okay, um, and then what is your <laughs> what is your favorite trope to write? Friends to lovers. Yeah, that's a popular one. Um, okay, so if you could choose to live in any era, what era would you choose? Hmm, probably about the 1920s, enough modernization to be comfortable, um, but classic enough to be, you know, to feel a little bit more at home. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more period for sure. <laughs> um, who was your first mm -hmm. boyfriend? Ooh, probably Knightley from Jane Austen. Mm or possibly the man from Blue Castle, uh, from Ella Montgomery's book, Blue Castle. Mm -hmm. So good, okay. Um, what is, I know you said you're not, you are not a big historical romance reader, but uh, what is one historical romance you always recommend to a new reader of the genre? Anything that Joanne Bischoff writes is amazing. And also I would say maybe Christy Cameron. Those two ladies, um, they write with such beautiful, rich and strong um, emotions and their prose is just beautiful. Oh, cool. All right. Um, how do you celebrate when your new book releases? I take my kids out for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I have some local friends and if it's warm enough, we all meet up uh, with our kids and let them run around and eat ice cream. Oh, that's the best. What's the best flavor of ice cream? Cookie dough. <laughs> <laughs> 
delicious. I'm on ice cream now. I'm like craving Halloween candy. Okay. Oh yes. Um, so before you joined us, we do our, our uh, usual name game where we talk about what we're reading, watching, and listening to, and I'm going to ask you the same question. So do you okay. have any, uh, books that you're currently reading, um, that you would like to recommend or trash you're more than you don't have to, but you can, <laughs> <laughs> can just tell us what you like, of course. Um, and then also what you've been watching and listening to. Okay. So what I'm reading, I just finished the bright unknown. By Elizabeth Byler Younce, and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was beautifully written. It got me on the edge of my seat. Um, a book that I would definitely not recommend is Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. <laughs> I could definitely do without reading that one again. It was kind of disturbing. Um, what I am watching, I am currently binging Downton Abbey because I've never seen it before. Really? And yeah, my church is doing um, a, a Christmas dinner, Downton Abbey style, and they asked me to speak for it. So I had never seen it. I figured I should probably see it. Yep, so sure. I just started watching it on a night that I couldn't sleep in the middle of the night. And I've been, I think I'm through the next to the last season now. So it's really fun. Yep. What I'm listening to a lot is classical music, mostly Chopin and Liszt because the book that I'm working on is um, about the Victorian asylums and the very beginnings of music therapy. My main character is a concert pianist. So I'm kind of getting the background for her music. Oh, wow. How do you research the um, asylums of the period? I read a lot of books and some of which kind of make me sick. <laughs> yeah. But I try to stay away from current fiction that is written about the asylums because they kind of give a certain impression. Um, I'm actually reading case notes. Um, I'm reading, I read a lot of Google Docs that are free mm -hmm. um, from, well, Google Books, I should say, that are in the public domain, things that were published in the Victorian era um, by these asylum doctors, the alienists. And uh, a lot of my research has come from that, basically. Yeah, I really enjoyed parts of the alien is show that was on but it's very dark and very 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 violent <laughs> I'm afraid to watch it honestly I yeah. haven't seen it yet but I probably should watch it for research <laughs> is there a genre that you or um I mean I know you are very happy in in Victorian but is there a genre you'd like to explore in the future time travel or Victorian steampunk I oh. think would be really fun that'd be, it'd be a perfect blending of everything yes <laughs> Are you a big steampunk reader now? Um, not a whole lot. Um, I've actually only found one author, um, Morgan Bussey. Um, but it just fascinates me. I don't know why. It just, it looks like right up my alley. Mm -hmm. It's all the, like, the, again, it goes back to how you like the 1920s. It's just enough mm -hmm. moderniz modernization with the historical aspects to it that just kind of play with each other. Exactly, yes. <laughs> Well, Joanna, before we um, end our uh, official interview, how can readers stay in touch with you and find out more about you? Uh, the two biggest ways that I connect are my newsletter, which you can sign up on my website, jdpstories.com, um, and my Facebook author page. That's where I post most stuff. I'm also, I put um, book pages on Pinterest, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram as well. Great. Well, Joanna, thank you so much for joining us. And we really appreciate that you'll take a few extra minutes to take some follow-up questions. Of course. Thank you for having me.